Hi, my name is Martin Keary, and I'm the head of design at MuseScore. This is a quick video to talk about our community and how they all work together to make MuseScore what it is today. And I'm also gonna let you know about how you can get involved too if you're interested. So MuseScore is an open source project with a community of testers, translators, developers, and musicians who actively contribute towards making it better. And being new to the MuseScore team myself, I really had no idea of the scope of this contribution until I started working with them personally. And I thought it would make for a fairly interesting video. So to take one example, MuseScore is fully translated into 21 different languages and partially translated into a further 55 languages. And this is due to volunteers who believe in the idea of free open source technology and just want to make it available to as many people around the world as possible. And after a career spent mainly working on commercial software, where translation services are expensive and difficult to manage, I was astounded by the fact that this resource is provided by our community for free. If you're interested in learning more about this or want to join in to help, there are a few useful links in the description. In a similar vein, there are other contributors who focus on continuously improving accessibility support for people with severe vision or mobility impairment. Part of this work involves making sure that all functionality can be accessed via the keyboard while continuously improving support for things like screen readers. Again, this is a daunting task even for the largest companies and many applications simply fail to support accessibility properly. There are two contributors who particularly help MuseScore in this area. One is Mark Sabatella, who's been contributing for about 10 years and who's responsible for a large amount of online documentation and tutorial videos. In fact, if you've ever typed, how do I do XYZ in MuseScore into a search engine, you've likely come across his work. Another is Peter Jonas, a contributor who helped make our recent palette changes accessible upon release. It's hard to understate how much time this saved us and how it helps us to make quick design improvements. Peter also was responsible for integrating a service called AppImage, which allows MuseScore to run on any Linux distribution. Apart from that, you may have noticed two significant improvements to MuseScore recently. One was a change made to the note input functionality, which allows you to add and change durations and accidentals much more quickly than before. This was the first design that I contributed to MuseScore, which we released to the community initially for feedback. It caught the eye of one contributor called Matt McClinch, who took it upon himself to just do it. And shortly afterwards, he sent us a version of the app with the changes fully implemented. And this just blew me away. In the world I come from, I'm used to things taking forever to get done. Another quick example, for those people who've been requesting better dynamic support, especially for dynamics on a single note, so, you know, it doesn't just go but it goes well, for that improvement, you can thank the contributor James Thistlewood, who worked on the code. And a special shout out to Christian Collins too, who we hired to make this work with our sound font. Then there are our testers, people who look through MuseScore and who submit hundreds of bugs to the community and who actively take part in tracking issues, spotting duplicate bugs and generally sorting it all out. Each bug is discussed, prioritized and eventually fixed by one of the members of the community. And this is the behind the scenes magic that allows MuseScore to remain as fast and responsive as it is. There are too many people to thank here, but I want to call out two users who tirelessly submit bugs on a daily basis. Jean-Bernard Roy, who's mostly known as Cadiz1, and Mike Nelson, who goes by Mike320, or maybe it's 320. And on the other side of these conversations, you'll inevitably find one of our most active contributors, Joachim Schmitz, offering advice and generally helping to sort through the mountain of information that gets submitted. And there are other contributors on the dev side who actively help out on a daily basis, like Howard Chang, who joined us about two months ago. Anyone who wants to contribute in this area by submitting a bug can use our issue tracker, and the link for that is below. Then there's the day-to-day -day engagement with the general public. That's answering people's questions and directing them to the right resources. This is generally a group effort and many of the people I've already mentioned actively help out in this area, but I want to call out one particular contributor, Johan Temmerman, who you'll know well if you're a member of the MuseScore Facebook group. Apart from that, we'll always welcome new contributors who are familiar with C++ or who want to learn it. You can choose your own level of involvement here, be it anything from fixing a few bugs every once in a while to working directly with me on the implementation of a large feature. Any contribution is appreciated. Our community prides itself on welcoming new members and helping them to get up to speed. There are a lot of other people who it just wasn't practical to name here, but if you do decide to try out our community, you'll meet them soon enough. Again, if you're interested in taking part in whatever way, please check out the details below. 
So thanks very much to our contributors for all the work they've done so far, and thank you for watching the video. I'm going to be releasing regular updates on this channel about our design plans for MuseScore, and you'll see those if you subscribe. And if you're interested, I often make calls on my Twitter channel for people to come and help test new features that we're trying out. And once again, I'm beginning to turn into a broken record here. The link is below. Thanks very much and take care.